Wow, Thank you. how epic is this? You must be tired. <laughs> no, just getting going. We're, we're so excited to finally get a chance to show it to, uh, to a, a larger audience. It's great. It's one of the best things I've seen in quite a while. And I felt Thank so you. in it, you know. Thank so, you. So um, I know this all sort of uh, evolved a while ago. I, I think long ago you were a fan of, I guess, Fallout 3. Yeah. What was it about that that became your entry point to this? And um, how much time did you delve into that? Was it distracting? And did it affect your deadlines on writing The Dark Knight? <laughs> it certainly Rises. did. Not Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. Um, yeah, I was looking, you know, every time, for me gaming, uh, and I've got kids now, so my, I've had to hang up most of my, my, hang up my spurs for the most part with games. But I used to love taking a bit of a brain cleanse in between projects. Uh, and at, the late 2000s was a moment in which I started to feel like as a filmmaker um, that when people would ask me what was your favorite movie of the year, what was your favorite show of the year, as often as not my answer would be a game. Gaming really started to take, and it's crazy for me to watch the entire evolution of an art form, you know, from my, from my life, starting with Pong all the way up to something as, as, as sophisticated and elaborate as Fallout. But in, in any given year, you started to feel like the games were more <clears throat> subversive, more interesting, more surprising. And I think that was my experience of Fallout 3, was I just needed a brain cleanse in between projects. We've been working pretty steadily. Um, and I just got sucked in by the incredibly expansive, immersive world of the game, but also the, the tone of it. It's so weird, it's so unique. It's dark, it's violent, it's funny, it's goofy, it's political, satirical, subversive. It's all the things that I like in one package, and that doesn't usually work, right? It's not usually all things to all people, but for me in these games, especially with the, with the, the degree to which you could explore them, you really could, you could pack all of these wonderful things in there. So we've tried to with the series. I love that. It's evident. Uh, did I hear you correctly? You started with Pong? Yeah, yeah. No, Chris and I had a Pong, had the, the original Pong console you plugged into your, into your, uh, cathode ray television and, and so you know it's crazy to you know I, mean, I, I Chris was talking the other day at, at the Academy Awards about the fact that movies are really only about a hundred years old as a storytelling medium which is f fucking wild to me that my career now spans a quarter of that medium um, but with video games you've seen if you know if, if you're our age you've seen the whole thing right from the very right. beginning and you know exactly, you know, you, you, you know, it's, it's, you, you can completely, it's like, hey, how crazy would it be to, to have experienced the entire lifespan of the novel, right? But, but here we get this incredible privilege to be able to watch this art form develop from something always sophisticated, always challenging, but to become something so rich and sophisticated, kind of amazing. What are you most proud of about this series? Was there a particular, the way the stories were arced or, or special effects? What are you most proud of? I think I'm, I'm, I'm probably most proud of our, hopefully our ability to take one of the hallmarks of the games, which are these unique, beautiful, explorable environments. I mean, that was one of the things about watching video games grow up. I remember, I can't remember which, I think it was Outrun. You remember Outrun was a driving game? And I remember there, there were mountains right. in the distance, right? And it's a terrific game, but you could never get to the mountains, right? And you always thought to yourself, like, what's over that horizon, right? I'm loving this game, but I just want to get to those mountains. Fallout is a game where if you can see it, you can get there. And it's one of the, there's always a moment in one of these games fairly early on where you get to the top of a tall building and you can kind of see the entire environment. So the huge challenge for us, but one of the things I was proudest of was here are these games in which you have these epic vistas, you have this vision of a world that's been completely transformed, then all the way down to every object that you can pick up, you can read the journals that people have left behind, the comic books. Uh, from, from the sublime to the particular, every detail of this world is kind of explorable. So to give the audience that feeling, that feeling of a universe in which you can simultaneously feel the grandeur of it, but also the detail of it, was something that, you know, I, I'd happily take credit for it, but it's really our incredible crew, uh, led by our production designer, Howard Cummings, who, who just, you know, with a love for the material and the games, and we had a lot of fans of the games on our crew, just faithfully building out this universe. But, you know, we knew that one of, the, one of the only things that we could really offer here, when you're taking away so much variability from the games, um, we knew we could, we could add reality. 
So we packed the bag, we dragged ourselves down to the Skeleton Coast in Namibia, out to the western salt flats of Utah, uh, dragged our cast and crew with us, and, uh, and just did our large format filmmaking.